I want to welcome you again to the Lighthouse Intercessors channel. I feel like the Holy Spirit gave me a word today to encourage us. And that is that we are going to be in a time of reconstruction. Now, reconstruction means that something has to be torn down. Something has to be broken down and actually destroyed before you can begin the process of reconstruction. I don't know if you've ever had the experience of uh, refinishing a piece of furniture or perhaps taking something that you have bought at a garage sale and redoing it. Maybe you had to put fresh paint or maybe you had to even take it apart and just start over. Maybe you've uh, gotten pieces of material that had been from a great-grandmother and you have put those together and made pillows or have put together and made a, a pretty blanket to put those memories together. The point is, is that you had to put some work into it, some thought into it, some creativity. And maybe you had to even buy a few extra things to make that, that piece that you worked on look like you wanted it to. Well, that's part of reconstruction. Maybe you've had to go through some physical changes in your life due to surgery and you've had reconstruction on your own personal self or you've reconstructed places of brokenness in your soul that you've had special ministry and prayer and you have studied the Word of God and He has remade the person that you are and healed those broken places, mended them. That is reconstruction. So there must be something that's torn down before it can be built back up. And God has a redeeming purpose for all of us. His heart is for us. And God is a redemptive God. He loves us. He wants to redeem and make our lives everything that is good and that is pure and perfect and just brings glory to His name. We were created and are created in His image, spirit, soul, and body. And aren't you thankful with all the confusion that this world talks about, which is, we know, part of the enemy's plot and scheme to tear down this next generation. We know that God has created us, especially in His image, male and female, together represent the full, complete image of God. Um, he says in Malachi that he seeks a godly seed from a godly marriage. And that is his desire. So that's showing the world the true image of God. And the enemy does everything he can to break down, to destroy that image. May we be builders in the kingdom of God and bring glory to His name of what we have to show to the world the truth of who He is. The uh, reconstruction is a building term. And first of all, if you have a building or a home that you want to redo, sometimes you just buy the property. You don't want the house on that property. 
you want that piece of property to reconstruct a brand new home. There might be some trees on that property you want to build that house around. Or there might be a building that you want to have on that property because it's a, a prime piece of real estate. You're getting the picture. So you have to have a wrecker or a wrecking ball. Do you remember who was uh, called a wrecking ball? Yeah, he was called a wrecking ball. Wrecking balls make loud noises. I would say they were like um, booms. If you're catching my drift and you would have a lot of fallout a lot of debris it would be pretty messy wouldn't be very pleasant maybe would cause a little bit of disruption in a person's um, schedule or their lives because suddenly the way that they go to work all the time is there's cones and blocks and obstacles everywhere because hey the wrecking balls there and it's fixing to bring a big boom and totally knock out that uh, building you know we have seen what wrecking ball can do in our nation haven't we and we've seen some good things come out of that as a result because this same person who is a wrecking ball this guy he's also a builder he's built a lot of things throughout the world and he's really good at it and the other thing he's really good at is making deals. He's also really good at getting the right price for things. He doesn't just accept that it's going to cost a million dollars to build a building. Did we not see that in the Jerusalem Embassy for the United States? Yes, we did, didn't we? It's amazing, isn't it? How much money this man saved. How he thinks about what our taxes go to, what we pay for. We saw this man, a builder. So, what does a builder do? Well, a builder does construction. Reconstruction is part of, of course, re means to redo. Re means it's a repeat. It's a, re is a pre prefix for something that's done again. Okay, like repeat. Construction. I want to tell you what that word means. Many, many different meanings in different areas, okay? Depending on what you are constructing and working on. It means to create, to build, to make by arranging parts or elements, to make a whole. Frame, building blocks of ideas or solutions. It's the act of building, nature of its structure, to engineer, design, formation, order, to bring to a redemptive purpose. We have been praying for years on our National Day of Prayer for the seven mountains of culture and we have been believing that God was going to reconstruct 
those seven mountains so that the kingdom of God would shine forth in all those major areas of our society. But to do that, we must have destruction. And unfortunately, one of the areas that we have prayed over but I don't know that when we prayed, we fully understood how to pray. Is the mountain of religion. And of course, the church, we thought, well, the church, you know, would be the least of the ones to be destroyed before it could be come all God called it to be. But apparently, we had that a little wrong, didn't we? So God is going to destroy some things in the church, particularly in organizations, in church structure, in leadership that have been based on worldly principles that have a bit of idolatry and immorality and mm, what about the spirit of mammon yeah and so all those areas are going to be reconstructed so God showed me today that we must listen for his voice for his will in the days of ahead and we must have keen discernment by hearing his voice we also must be ready to call in godly uncompromised leaders of these seven mountains what do i mean by uncompromised do you remember when Moses was told to appoint judges to help him? He had to find men of integrity who would not be bribed, who would not be taken in by money or by uh, favors or something of that nature. So that is what we have to find in apparently the body of Christ as leaders that will truly love the flock, the sheep of God's pasture, and who will not be after the sheep to fleece them, to deceive them, to abuse them, or to gain something from them. Do we need to intercede and pray for these things? Yes, we do. Why should we think that all these other mountains should just automatically have it together if we are not getting it together in the body of Christ first. The Lord is going to bring reconstruction, but there will be some things that are going to cause us to shake and tremble as He brings His righteous justice and His order and tear down, as it says in several scriptures that I would like to present to you for your prayers and guidance. First of all, these are not in any particular order, but did you notice that when Nehemiah went to rebuild the walls that were torn down, the gates that were totally destroyed and burnt, he went at Cyrus's command. Remember Isaiah 45? 
that's about an anointed appointed shepherd that was not even Jewish his name was Cyrus Isaiah 45 yeah okay just making sure we're on the same page then he said to them this is Nehemiah you see the distress that we are in how Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire fire's judgment here a spirit of burning and judgment we find in Isaiah chapter 4 come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach and I told them the hand of my God which had been good upon me and also of the king's words that Cyrus that he had spoken to me so they said let us rise up and build then they set their hands to this good work are we as the body of Christ going to rise up in this hour of reconstruction and build or are we going to be so devastated by the destruction and the tearing down of idols that we wring our hands and say woe is me what do I do now now where do I go to church now who do I listen to where do I get my books where do I get my worship or are you going to say Lord God I will rise up and build the kingdom I will be a harvester in this hour what are some other scriptures that we find about this subject of reconstruction Ezekiel 22 30 and I'm going to say this in both genders so I sought for a man or a woman among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it but I found no one I think he found somebody yeah who really loves America and who saw what was going to happen it's called the 16-year plan it's called the Georgia stones I think that's the name of it or uh, the Agenda 21 I can't remember all the names they've called it but or maybe you could go watch The Simpsons and find out what was going to happen next they seem to have inside information if you ever noticed okay so now let's go to another scripture Isaiah 58 12 this is about us those from among you shall build the old waste places you shall raise up the foundations of many generations like before we took prayer out of school and you shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of streets to dwell in okay so you can start calling me Rhonda repairer and Rhonda restorer because I'm going to be the reconstruction crew how about you okay and then I say a 61 4 this is us and they shall rebuild the old ruins you mean like Hollywood when it's all torn down will rebuild will it become Hollywood hmm or what about our education mountain will we start teaching the true history of our nation and will we teach them about the civics and about 
I will be teach them about true government. Will we teach the Word of God in our churches? Or will we just tell jokes and stories? Think about it. What will we do? We've got to reconstruct. They will raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the ruined cities. The desolations of many generations. You see, what's happened to America did not happen overnight. Did you realize that the depopulation agenda has been planned for a long time? We have got to stop being so naive so vulnerable, so uh, gullible, simple-minded. We've got to have strategies as the people of God to know the truth and to get intimate with Holy Spirit so that He can tell us what the truth is in every situation. You know, we've been taught by a certain letter for the last few years to research and to think for ourselves and not just take the news media and what they say as, oh, that's what really happened. Did you hear? And did you see that? Hmm. Did you see that movie? The Matrix? Hmm. Could they have been trying to tell us something? Or in those Hunger Games? Or, uh, well, there's so many different movies. What can I say? And then let's look at another scripture here. This is what happens when God chose Moses. Psalms 106 verse 23. By the way, Moses was up against a hard place when the Egyptians were coming. And he raised up the word of God which represented his staff. And the Red Sea parted, you remember? Yeah. Have you heard have you heard that word about how the Red Sea, the all the red hats of Make America Great Again parted and started leaving? after he spoke on January the 6th. Mm -hmm. Not an insurrection. It's time. It's time for a moving forward into God's plan. This is God's plan we're in. This is part of the destruction because it's going to be soon time for reconstruction. So, I want you to go get your building tools. I want you to get your dreams outlined. Your vision of what you want. Your mountain that you're taking to look like. I want you to get ready to take territory. The enemy's had it long enough. I, I, it says, therefore, he said that he would destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen one, stood before him in the breach. There's that word again, the breach. To turn away his wrath, lest he destroy them. If you're an intercessor, that's your job. To stand in the gap before the Lord. The breach, to be a repairer and a restore of the breach. And we have 
another scripture here in Hosea chapter 6, 1 through 3. Come and let us return to the Lord. This man, it's been prophesied that he's going to cause us to turn back to God. God is so wonderful. He uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. I wonder what people thought when Jesus died on the cross. Like, what was God thinking doing that? Killing his only son? Hmm, he had a plan, didn't he? It looked like he destroyed his son. But, hmm, he was raised up on the third day. And he lives now, interceding for us, cheering us on. It's amazing his plans, don't you think? His strategies and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are greater than our ways. I would never have picked the guy from The Apprentice to lead us to God. Really? Hmm. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he is torn. Hmm. That's a destructive word. But he will heal us. That's reconstruction. He has stricken. Hmm, that sounds like destruction. But he will bind us up. See, restore. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up. That sounds like resurrection. That we may live in his sight. Let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord, for his going forth is as certain as the dawn. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and the former rain, to this earth, this earthen vessel. Are you thirsty? Are you hungry for more? Are you thirsty for the Lord? He's going to pour his presence, his glory on America. And we are going to be flooded with his presence. And we're going to find reconstruction in that flood of his presence. We're going to find the strategies that we need. According to Jeremiah 1, 9 through 10, this is the last scripture. Then the Lord God put forth his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, this is Jeremiah, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down to build and to plant when you prepare your garden you have to destroy whatever is there on that land you have to remove things remove the sticks the rocks the bad soil you have to come in you have to redo and then you plant and then you water and you watch over those, those the, that area. You plow up. You get, get it ready, the soil ready to receive. And then you start seeing the growth and the changes and the beauty that you have worked and labored and loved and prayed over. And then you see the harvest and you have the fruit and it tastes so good because you did it with your own two hands and you're probably your back too reconstruction is coming america it's time christian to get ready and write down your vision write down your dream 
And I pray God gives you grace and favor to lead in one of these seven mountains and cause people to see the glory of God in the church first and foremost and then throughout all the seven mountains of our culture. And would you pray for this, this guy back here? Our builder, Deluxe. Yeah. God bless you.